Hello everyone. Today we are going to start with oscillations. Oscillations when we talk about is about the to and fro motion, about the vibration, right? You can see the name oscillations as vibration, or you can also call it as a to and fro motion. So. About this motion, we have heard frequently. We know that pendulum undergoes to and fro motion, right? A string strikes between two ends, plugged and released, undergoes vibratory motion, or you may say oscillatory motion. So, regarding this, apart from the theoretical understanding, today we are going to see the mathematical or the physics involved in these oscillations. So, two terms, first of all, to be understood is oscillatory motion and the uh, other one is a periodic motion so what about oscillatory motion oscillatory motion it is you can identify by to and fro that is nothing but vibrations and periodic motion that is only one way to identify that is they repeat after particular period so after fixed period, this periodic motion they will repeat themselves. Example is rotation of earth or you may say revolution of earth or moon around the earth. Right? All those are periodic motion. They repeat after fixed interval of time. Whereas when we talk about oscillatory motion, it is to and fro. To and fro, if we understand symbolically, it would be something like this. From A, the pendulum goes to B, then from B again back to A and then to C. From A to B, then from B to A, from B A to C and then again from C to A. So same path is repeated again and again. Addition to the to and fro, oscillatory motions are also periodic. They complete within fixed interval of the time. So, these two words, oscillatory motion and periodic motion, example is a pendulum or stretched string between the two ends, plugged and released from the center. Then next we see periodic or harmonic function. This is a function which will be helpful or which is used in representing the oscillatory motion. The to and fro motion in a mathematical form can be expressed using periodic or harmonic function. So let's say y is equals to sin x. This equation it represents a harmonic function. On other side you can also say y is equals to cos x. It represents a periodic or a harmonic function. Now the question arises why we have selected sin and cos? Why not any other trigonometrical quantity? The reason is, one, they are periodic in the nature and second one, their graphs are uh, quite useful in representing the various terminologies or various physical quantities associated with, associated with the oscillations or even waves. So, the graph of a sine function and the graph of a cosine function will be somewhat like this. Let us understand this graph little bit in detail in terms of mathematics, not in terms of physics, but in terms of mathematics. So, sin x, this value here it is 0, this is pi by 2 radius, this is pi, and this will be 3 pi by 2, and this is 2 pi. So, exactly one rotation, right? 360 degrees. And again here, this is 0, then 90. Then 3 pi by 2 and then 0 pi by 2 then it is pi then this will be 3 pi by 2 and this will be 2 pi. So cos you know uh, in mathematics lower classes 9, 10 you might have seen that the value of sine 0 is 0 then sine 30 it is 1 by 2 sine 90 it is 1 then sine 180 it is again 0 and sine 2 pi that is 360 it is again minus 1. So corresponding to this for cos we know that the value of cos 0 is 1, cos 90 it is 0, then cos 180 it is minus 1 and cos 360 
it is once again 0. Uh, 0, 90, 180 and 360. Yes, in 360 the value is again 1. You can see here that sine 0 is 0. Then sine 90 the value corresponds to 1. 1 means this represents the amplitude. Amplitude means how far the pendulum is going to go from its mean position. Then sine 90 is again sine 90 is 1. Sine 180 is 0. Right, sine 270 it is minus 1 and sine 360 it is again 0. Same way here also 90, 180 cos 270 will be 0 and cos 360 will again be 1. So just check this sine 0 is 0 at 90 the value is 1 at 180 again the value is 0 at 270 the value is minus 1. And then at 360 again it becomes 0 and then this keeps on repeating in a circle somewhat like this 0, 90 that is pi by 2 this is pi 3 pi by 2 and this is 2 pi and still you can keep on rotating it as many times as you want but the same graph will be repeated after every one rotation and that is why we call it periodic or harmonic function. And same for cos x, you can verify the values cos 180 being minus 1, 270 being 0 and 360 being again 1. So these two are the periodic or harmonic functions because the graph gets repeated after regular interval. So oscillations in a very simple form can be represented by these periodic functions. Either u is y is equal to sin x or y is equal to cos x. After periodic or harmonic function, we have harmonic oscillations or you may also say periodic oscillations. So harmonic oscillations, these are the oscillations which can be represented by simple harmonic function. Simple harmonic function. Simple harmonic functions are like y is equals to sin x, y is equals to cos x. These are simple harmonic functions. You cannot write down as square x. This won't be make a oscillation harmonic. This will make oscillations non-harmonic. Apart from y is equals to sin x, uh, you can also represent it by a sin x plus b cos x. Even this function also represents a harmonic oscillation and which type of harmonic oscillation? A simple harmonic oscillation. Simple harmonic as oscillation or you can uh, modify it as a simple harmonic motion. SHM. So SHM can be represented by y is equals to sin x or y is equals to cos x or this way. Or if I write one more format, it would be y is equals to a sin x, where a represents the amplitude. Here, y is equals to sin x, you can keep 1 over here and just see that the amplitude is 1. Here also, 1, so corresponding amplitude is 1 or it is minus 1. So, a represents some different amplitude and here also b represents some different amplitude. So simple harmonic function, motions and then non-harmonic motion, non-harmonic motion means the graph is not as simple as these drawings. The graph would be somewhat uh, like this. So these are not non-harmonic, they are combination of multiple functions like sine, cos, tan, cot and such things uh, we don't study at the level 12. But solving, finding the relevant physical quantities, we do with the help of such simple functions, right? Which is called as a simple, which represents simple harmonic motion. Uh, next, moving on to the terminologies that we frequently use in case of SHM, in the case of study of oscillations or to be more specific to study the SHM. We are going to see in much more details over the main subtopic. The topic is oscillations under which the main subtopic is simple harmonic motion, SHM. 
So terminology is the first one we have is amplitude. Uh, you know very well that amplitude it is nothing but the maximum displacement from the mean position. In terms of pendulum, uh, this would be the amplitude, maximum displacement from the mean position. Either capital A rather than capital A, small A would be better to represent the amplitude A. Uh, so in terms of amplitude, y is equal to a sin x, a represents the amplitude, the maximum displacement from the mean position. Then second one we have time period, time period it is nothing but the time taken to complete one oscillation. I will show you that in this equation we also have a time period already involved. Before that let us see the frequency. Frequency is number of oscillations taking place in one second and then we have angular frequency. Angular frequency, this word we use because you can see here that the string of the pendulum will be making some angle. That means the string of the pendulum, the pendulum itself, this bob is going, it's undergoing a angular motion. So we need angular frequency to to do some other calculations. So angular frequency omega is equal to 2 pi f or omega is equal to 2 pi by t. So this equation will be modified as y is equal to a sin omega t. This again it will remain radians. Or uh, dimensionally it should be very clear that the argument of the angle it is in radians ultimately it has no dimension. So that is one of the way you may check that what argument you have written over here. Argument in the sense this argument x can be written in multiple forms when we study oscillations or waves. So one of the form is this simple x, another format is omega t. It can be further written as a sin. Omega is nothing but 2 pi by t. So 2 pi by t into t. So this is the another form of argument of sin. You can see here the dimensions of sin, sin get cancels. Only radian remains and radian is dimensionless. So these are the terminologies which we will be using in the oscillations as well as in the waves. Uh, next, let's, let us see what simple harmonic motion it means much more in detail. We have seen that simple harmonic motion is the one which can be represented by y is equal to a sin omega t, right? A basic one of the form of representing the simple harmonic motion then more about simple harmonic motion. Uh, in mechanical terms, simple harmonic motion, it is a motion in which there is a restoring force. To understand this, we will take an example of the pendulum, right? Pendulum when it is stretched to the other end, with mg acting the downward direction, resolving it. Let's say it has been rotated by the angle theta. This angle will also be theta, mg cos theta and this one will be mg sin theta. So the motion of the pendulum is towards left side but mg sin theta is restoring force which is acting in the opposite direction. So there is a restoring force whose, whose direction is Opposite to displacement. The displacement is taking towards left direction, restoring force is in the right direction. If we write it mathematically, restoring force F is negative of X, that is, whichever direction the force is, in its opposite direction, the displacement is taking place. Negative sign shows that force and displacement are in the opposite direction. Removing proportionality sign and putting one constant K. Where k is a constant, it's also called as a spring constant or oscillation constant, you can call it as. So this is one more thing about the simple harmonic motion that there must be a restoring force which is exactly in opposite direction to that of the displacement. Then one more thing about the restoring force that is that restoring force is directed towards, it's directed towards center. That is, 
even if it is in this direction, the restoring force is directed towards the center or center, instead you may say it as a mean position. So these two things, uh, they describe the simple harmonic motion theoretically and this equation describes simple harmonic motion in mathematical format. 